Hey guys, I'm Will from Tested. I'm Norm from Tested. Norman Chan, I have had the iPhone 6 Plus for one, two, three, four days and a half now. Not six plus days, which Not will be how long we'll wait, at least six days before we do a review. More than that. More than we that. We like to live with stuff before we use it, but I've gotten more questions about this than probably anything we've tested ever uh, via Twitter. People are asking me all day. So we wanted to, first off, kind of give you a quick rundown about you know what's different, how size compares to your OnePlus One, my old iPhone 5S, uh, the Nexus 5, some other phones we have around, and then we have a handful of the most common questions we got, uh, and we'll answer those uh, at least as best we can right now. So that's the 5S. I, I don't think it's turned on. Mm. Um, I picked it up yesterday after having used the 6 all weekend, and it feels, I, I, now I know what Shaquille O'Neal feels like. It feels tiny. It feels tiny in my hand. I don't dislike that still, but I've gotten used to the big screen much faster than I expected. Um, the big thing that I noticed immediately about this is the, the power button on the side takes a huge adjustment. So it's previously been on the top. I hadn't really appreciated how used I've gotten to just matching the top button to turn it on and off. Um, and because the power button is opposite the volume buttons, I find myself hitting the volume up down fairly frequently when I'm when I'm trying to hit the, the power button. Actually. How is the height on the power button? Uh, it's a pretty good spot. So if you look at how I'm holding the phone, you know you, you don't hold this phone cradled like I did the iPhone 5 and 5S and 4 and all the others in the crook of your hand. You hold it more sideways, and it actually is a really good place for that. Um, I'm going to hit the button. So there we go. So back on the home screen, uh, that's the big thing. Let's compare it to some of the other phones you have. A, a large Android. Well, that, this is the Nexus 5. Yep. Um, this is about the same size as the iPhone 6. Yep. Um, it's a little bit smaller, I think, actually, but thicker, right? Yeah. Um, I, I picked up my wife's iPhone 6 and used it a little bit over the weekend. It's too soon to say which I prefer. Like, I, I have until next Thursday to return this. I'm just getting notification after notification. Um, and I, I don't know what I'm going to do with this yet. I don't know if I'm going to keep it. I don't know if I'm going to exchange it for a 6. I don't know what my strategy is. This is your OnePlus One. This is the more direct comparison. Yeah. These are now both 5.5 inch 1080p panels. And, but Apple's doing something interesting. It's actually not rendering it at 1080p. It's rendering at a higher resolution, triple the point density mm -hmm. of the original iPhone, whereas the iPhone 5 and the 4 were double the point density. Rendering triple that point density and then scaling down. So theoretically, everything should even be sharper on that than on the 1080p. Well, and the upshot is that apps that are legacy apps, like TweetBot here, is still uh, uses the old APIs. When you actually, oops, oh, I'm not on the internet now, so of course this isn't gonna work, but uh, when you scroll, there's an occasional hitching. It's less apparent in TweetBot than it is in Safari and some of the 3D transitions. Like I noticed it in the Safari tab animation thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a huge deal, but I definitely didn't notice that on my wife's six and it, it did show up here. As a direct comparison, because this is currently my favorite Android phone, it being the 5.5 inch phone, iPhone 5 or 6 Plus is actually a little taller, but thinner, much thinner. For a six. It's a little less bezely. Your OnePlus One is a little less bezely than the than the iPhone as well, it seems like. Yeah. And um, then the button placement for that thumb is actually higher on the six plus here. And then the six plus also has a protruding camera, although I don't think this matters that much. You have a bulge on the camera. A lot of people asked about whether the camera made the phone wobble when you lay it flat. It does just a tiny, tiny bit, but it's less than, say, a phone like that. I mean, you kind of get a little bit of a little tiny bit of a wobble. It's nothing that you notice. Um, you don't notice it when you're putting it in and out of your pocket or anything like that. I actually am printing at home right now a rig to hook the 6 and the 6 Plus to the same to the same grip so I can shoot the same video with the same hand on both cameras to see if the optical image stabilization on this matters at all. Because that's the only real big difference other than the screen in this phone and the, and the six, normal 6. Design of the iPhone 4, 4S, 5, and 5S had these uh, flat edges, mm -hmm. you know, the Leica styles, what Steve Jobs called them. And this is a departure from that with the rounded edges. The thing I've heard from people, I'm curious about your thoughts, is whether it's slippery. It's a little harder to grip. That was actually one of the questions we got. Uh, Daniel Kowalczyk said, hey, uh, does it slip out of your hands? It's bigger, so it's definitely harder to grip because of that, but also the rounded edges don't are, aren't quite as grippy or don't seem to be compared to the older phones. Um, part of that was an adjustment. That was literally the first thing I thought when I picked it up. Um, 
once I got, once I've adjusted to it and changed the way I hold the phone so that instead of kind of balancing it high in my hand, I was holding it more in the middle, then, then that's worked a little bit better. The place I find is that you want to have it low enough that you can double tap that home button because that double tap to swipe down gesture, this thing where you tap the, the home button twice, not press, but tap to pull the whole screen down is super useful. And it lets you even pull down notifications, well, if I could do it, from the, from the home screen. So in the home screen, it actually just pulls the icons down. This is their mm -hmm. reachability function, double tapping the home screen. And if you're in an application, you double tap it, it just shows the background, that knitted background. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I've found about iOS, and I, I expect that we'll see some changes in the future, is a lot of the OS is designed to work from the top, you know, the, the UI and the back and forward and all that stuff is at the top of the screen rather than the bottom. My hunch is that we'll see that stuff start to migrate down in upcoming versions of iOS. What are the other big questions that people ask? Um, people ask about battery life. Okay. A ton of people ask about battery life. It, I haven't done any formal testing yet, but you know how when you get a new phone, the first thing you do is you, you use it way more than you would naturally? A ton. Yeah. Um, I had to charge it at probably 11 o'clock on Friday night, which was a half day essentially, but it, it was a day where I was, you know, downloading all my apps. It didn't come fully charged. Um, I felt like that was pretty good. Saturday, I used it a ton. It lasted all day Saturday, which is mm. unusual for a new device that I'm excited about and, and really using wow. heavily. So um, better than I expected. Formal details later, a lot of other people have done battery benchmarks that we trust. And capacity-wise, iFixit has taken this apart. It has twice the battery capacity in the 6 Plus, almost twice as the 6. So well, it's a it's bigger consuming screen. consuming a lot more power yeah. because of that bigger LCD and a brighter backlight, but it's also a bigger battery to boot. Exactly. Um, next question is from Chicken Dig on Twitter. He says, can you show unoptimized apps? Yes, mm. I can. I'm going to show you two different kinds. Uh, the first one is Double. Uh, so this is a game, it's an old game, it's one of my favorites, but it was never optimized for the iPhone 5, it seems like. Wow, this is an old old iPhone 4, 4S, 4S game. aspect ratio game. And you can see the window that's displaying stops here and stops here. Everything up above is, is just blank. Mm. Um, I don't have any apps like this. This is the only one I could find that, that I use regularly. Mm -hmm. um, Tweetbot is another good example to show. This is a Twitter client, I, I quite like it. It has uh, multiple settings for font size, which is really useful. Um, I actually have, I typically on the old OS would use, on the old phone would use the system size, which I'll show you. That's big. And it's huge. Because it's scaling up from what I think should be a four inch phone to a 5.5 inch phone. Exactly, so it's scaling up from what it thinks should be the five or 5S. Um, this is, is rough. Uh, it's even more pronounced when you use the keyboard. If you look at the amount of space dedicated to keyboard here, it's enormous compared to what it is in an optimized app. Um, I hope, oh, okay, I know we don't have internet access. So see, we're looking at like a third of the screen for keyboard versus half for keyboard over here. It's wow. a ton. Um, I am using third-party keyboards on iOS. I used them on Android in the past. I quite like SwiftKey. Uh, the fact that it goes out and looks at all the different stuff that you, you write into, Evernote, Gmail, uh, Twitter, all that stuff, is super useful. Um, so the apps are being optimized constantly. I'm getting like 20 mm -hmm. app updates a day some days. Yep. Uh, Chrome now supports the iOS 8 high-speed JavaScript rendering, which is wonderful. It means you can use it. Can it's use fast. Chrome. It's as fast as Safari. Um, but the, the unoptimized apps need some help. Okay. So, next um, question. Next question is from Andrew Guimer. says, is this big enough to be a tablet replacement? I kind of think it is. Okay. Um, I'm browsing the web. Oh, I'm not going to be able to show you that now because we're not on the internet. But it does everything in landscape. So when you're looking at things like text messages, you get the two-pane view, mm. which is super useful. Uh, email, you get a two-pane view. So you get a list of your messages and then the contents of a message. Um, even in games. So, oops, sideways. Uh, that was a really wide keyboard. It is. a Yeah, you want to see? It's yeah. a crazy wide keyboard. Oops. Crazy wide keyboard. Unusable wide keyboard, I okay. would say. Um, so I'm going to launch Waterdeep, which is a, I think this is not optimized for, for 8 yet, but it is an iOS, it, it is a 5S app. Um, and it's, this is a game I play on my iPad. It's super playable on, um, on the phone as well. I've played a couple of games on this. The, the challenge with the iPad apps is that not all iPad apps are available in phone flavor as well. So like Ascension, the, um, the, Card game. the deck building mm -hmm. game, there's no iOS equivalent for that and, okay. and you end up kind of boned. Um, so yes, with caveats, I think we'll probably see the distinction between 
I, uh, iPhone apps and Android and iPad apps kind of a, a fade away over the coming year as well. Okay. Um, Bendig says, hey, uh, what about the flexible screen? Does it flex when you stress it or put it in your pocket? I'll show you. There is definite flexion. It's thin enough. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm gonna do it right now. This. You can see it bend, right? Wow. Yeah. Does your phone do that? No, I would never want to do that to my phone. You should try it. Te yeah, nope. Yours does it too. Oh, really? Yeah. No, that's the optical illusion. It, no, look at the screen. There's a little bit of a bend. Oh, I'm not gonna do that. That, yeah, sounds, no, that looks dangerous. It's scary. Uh, when you put this in your pocket, it's hard to put in your pocket when you're sitting down. Yeah. It, yep. oh. I don't notice it flexing. I could I never do that. Wear super skinny jeans. Oh, what? I could never put that in my pocket while sitting down. Because your, jeans physically, are, your pants are too tight. Physically unable to. Norm, you need bigger pants. Nope. Okay. Um, I do, it's too soon to know if that stuff is overblown or if it's real. I mean, people are posting about it. It made the rounds this morning, uh, yesterday morning for you guys on the web. I kind of see that kind of stuff and I see people getting link bait headlines. Um, I can't imagine you're going to put it in your front pocket and bend it by wearing, carrying it in your pocket. But who knows? I'm sure somebody will. Um, I think that's pretty much it for questions. We got, oh. Well, uh, one final question. There is a better camera. Again, we've, we're going to test the optical image stabilization, which is only on the iPhone 6 Plus. Yes. Not on the iPhone 6. We're not going to take it to Iceland, unfortunately. No, um, I'll take it to Iceland. Oh, okay, all right. Write the uh, check. There's also a high-speed camera on this. It does now 240 mm -hmm. FPS as opposed to 120 FPS. So I actually, I have a hummingbird feeder outside my kitchen window, and I was able to see hummingbird wings move by flapping their wings using the 240 frame per second camera. And then we did that just a minute ago. We'll show you that full video. So that's a really neat feature. Uh, again, the iPhone 6 Plus, if you can buy it, it's on sale now. It's $100 more than the iPhone 6 across all SKUs, 16 gigabytes, 64 gigabytes, or 128 gigabytes. We'll be testing things like Apple Pay as mm -hmm. that becomes more available. And we're going to have full uh, full in-depth for the 6 and the 6 Plus in coming weeks. Like, like Norm said in the beginning, we like to take our time with this. It's a complex device. You have to kind of live with it for a while to know whether you like it or not. Um, I noticed the Touch ID sensor is much better this time than the last go round, although that could be software updates too. So, right. early That's impressions? A, a quick impression and also yeah. answering your questions. If you have more questions about the iPhone 6 Plus, post them in the comments. We'll read them on YouTube, we'll read them on Tested, and answer them as we continue testing this. See you guys later. Bye.